Welcome to our workshop, I have a case in court, now what? Please read the disclosure that you see. Please note that all of the information contained in this workshop is purely general information and should not be relied upon for your particular situation. Each piece of information contained herein has many exceptions. You should research your legal issues before deciding on what actions to take or consult with your own attorney regarding your matter. The attorney leading this workshop is not your lawyer, but is a neutral person who does not represent any party. There is no attorney-client relationship between you and this attorney. You should consult with your own attorney if you want personalized advice or strategy. The Office of the Self-Help Center is not responsible for the outcome of your case. Let's begin by talking about what is a court action or case. A case is a process used to get a judgment ordering another party to do something, such as pay money, repair property, or stop doing something. The parties involved in a court case are the plaintiff or petitioner, the person filing the case or suing. The other party is the defendant or the respondent, the person who is being sued. This is a chart of the civil case process. You will note that there are many steps in a civil court case. We're going to talk about some of these steps here today. Let's begin by talking about what is a complaint or a petition. The complaint or petition is the first paper that the plaintiff or petitioner files in a case. It says what they think the defendant did and what they want the court to grant or order. The complaint can have general allegations and usually lists multiple claims. If you filed a complaint or a petition, did you file it correctly and did you include all the possible claims? If not, you may be able to go back and amend it. Once a complaint has been filed, it will need to be served. This is referred to as service of process. This is the phrase we use to describe a defendant being served with a complaint or petition, which notifies them that a case has been filed against them. You will note that there are four methods of proper service. Once the defendant is properly served and fails to appear within 30 days, the case can proceed as a default. If you have been served with a complaint or petition, you may be wondering, should I respond? After you are served, you have 30 days to file a response with the court. If you don't, the plaintiff can file a request for default. A default means you can no longer respond to the case and the plaintiff can get a judgment against you. That means the plaintiff will win the case. You may be in a situation where you're wondering, what if a default judgment is entered against me? A default judgment means that whatever the plaintiff or petitioner wanted, they got. The plaintiff can enforce that judgment against you, and they can collect that judgment. A judgment against you can show up on your credit report and make it hard to get a credit card or a loan. You can ask the court to set aside or cancel the default judgment, but only within six months of when the judgment was entered. The court is going to require a very good reason for why you did not respond within the 30 days. If you're thinking about responding to a case, you may be wondering, how do I respond? You can file most of the responses that we will cover today using court forms, which you can find at the places listed on your screen. Note, they are available at your local law library and at your local clerk's office. There are several different types of responses that can be filed. One is an answer or a response, 
where you raise defenses and or deny the claims in the complaint or petition. There are also various other motions that you can file to get the case stopped. These motions don't necessarily stop the case, but they may put it on hold or get the case moved to another court. In your response, you will likely want to include some defenses. So we are going to go over some of the common affirmative defenses. In order to use affirmative defenses, you must list these defenses in your very first responsive paper that you file with the court. Often, that's going to be your answer or your response. Our first common affirmative defense is the statute of limitations. The plaintiff must file his or her claim, their petition or complaint, within the applicable statute of limitations or time limit. The statute of limitations time limit determines whether a court can hear and decide a case or not. If a plaintiff does not file within the statute of limitations time limit, the plaintiff loses the case automatically, no matter how strong his or her case is, but only if the answer or response points out that defense. You will see here several examples of the time limits for statutes of limitations for different types of cases. Please be advised that these are only examples and you should consult the applicable code or statute or talk with an attorney for your statute of limitations in your particular case. Do not rely on these examples as there are many exceptions. Continuing with our affirmative defenses, you may want to include a defense that's based on the fact that the case has been filed in the wrong court. This can usually be based on one of two grounds. Either jurisdiction is incorrect or venue, the county, is incorrect for your particular case. Another common affirmative defense is the failure to state a cause of action. This defense can be used if the plaintiff's case has no legal merit. A cause of action is the basis of the lawsuit, where the defendant either violated an existing code or law, or acted or failed to act in a way that violates California common law. Every cause of action has certain elements to it that must be written in the complaint and later proven at trial. Finally, another common affirmative defense is the failure to exhaust other remedies. The court wants you to think about, did you try everything else first before you file a case in court? This comes up most commonly in two types of cases. First, cases where there are administrative remedies, such as cases involving a government agency. It also comes up in cases such as contracts cases, where there may be a clause requiring the parties to use alternative dispute resolution means before filing a case in court.